This is a video about the JVC HM-DH30000U DVHS cassette deck. And yes, you can see my reflection through the front of there. Very mirror-like there, I guess. This is a D-theater VCR. Now, most people have probably never heard of such a thing, but a D-theater VCR with its uh, acronym DVHS, standing for Data VHS, and later Digital VHS. Um, I actually made a video about this uh, not too long ago. There's a, a video in my video collection that talks about formats, like uh, formats in the past that have uh, entertained us. And I feature, kind of in a silly way, uh, this machine here. But uh, this, the one in that video wasn't mine. It was actually borrowed from a friend of mine to make the video. I had one of these DVHS machines years ago before any kind of high definition video disc format was on the scene. So I was watching high def video off of DVHS before HD DVD or Blu-ray were on the scene. So um, I wanted to get another one and I thought well maybe I could get one and if it's broken, get it for a cheaper price off of eBay and then just repair it. And you say, well, what's the point? Well, the point is to be able to watch these cool old movies that were released on this format. There's not that many out there. And uh, if you have a high definition TV, which most of us do nowadays, you will see quality equal to Blu-ray coming off of a VHS tape. Okay? Now, it's got to be a D VHS tape, but uh, it's a VHS tape nonetheless. So let's get to the point of what this video is about. Uh, I bought this one off of eBay and I got it for $75. And uh, I didn't mind paying that because I thought, well, maybe I can fix it. Well, I was able to fix it. Now, I'm going to show you something that is probably likely what is happening to your machine. Uh, you may have one of these and it just died. Uh, you're getting no power. You don't see any of this stuff on the front. Uh, you don't hear the little fan running in the back. It may not even do anything. That was the case with this one. There was no power whatsoever. Now, I looked online, and I found that there was a gentleman out there who had written on a forum. And here's what I printed out. And he said that if you replace these capacitors, and he's got them all marked there, with their value and where they're located on the circuit board that uh, you can bring your DVHS machine back to life. So I thought, well, what a great idea. I'll just find one that doesn't power up and I'll replace all these capacitors. So what's a capacitor? A capacitor is uh, these little guys. Kind of look like batteries with legs. Um, there's a bunch of these on the inside and um, it's really easy to do if you decide you want to try this project and I'll put a link in the uh, in the description as to uh, where to find all of these values here uh, or you can just kind of uh, pause the video here and uh, write them all down the unit that you're gonna to have to take out well first you'll have to take the unit apart and take the lid off but the power supply is here it's this box there's some cables that you'll have to disconnect, like, uh, fix the focus there, uh, like this ribbon cable, this ribbon cable, these two cables here, and then there's another big one here, okay? And then you'll remove these two screws. Once you get the unit out, there is a, um, uh, like a, I don't know, what do you call it, a shield on the bottom of it that will have to be removed. And if you know a little bit about soldering and desoldering on uh, circuit boards, you will see something like this. I'll just point out this one over here. Okay, notice how all of these resistors uh, on this particular board, all those R's right there, are all labeled. So it's very easy to locate these capacitors on the circuit board because they're all labeled. So all you need are some skill with uh, uh, soldering and desoldering, and that should not be a problem for you to do all that. 
Um, I would like to thank uh, Gateway Electronics, who is in St. Louis, because Gateway uh, was the one who sold me these parts. And this little stack of parts right here, these are the old ones that I've taken out. And uh, all those little parts cost me $5. $5 worth of parts from these guys here, Gateway Electronics in St. Louis. So I want to thank them because they were, uh, they were very helpful to me to get these parts together. I just called them up, said, hey, I want these parts, and they had them ready for me, and I picked them up. Now, one thing that was almost disappointing about this project is that once I got all the capacitors put in, uh, there was no power on the front. And um, I thought, well, it, you know, what else could it be? Well, you may have noticed that in my little stack of stuff over here was this little guy. That, which this iPhone here may not be able to focus on too. This is a fuse. And this was the fuse that was removed from this unit. It is a uh, 250 volt, well it says it on the side, on the side of, I mean here, here's where the fuse actually went. It's a 2 amp, 250 volt fuse. Now when I ran a voltmeter across it, continuity test across this uh, fuse, it checked out. There was a circuit uh, being made through this, Conduct conductivity. So I, you know, I was just like, well, you know, maybe it could be the fuse. So guess what? It was the fuse. So I put the fuse in, and after I replaced all the capacitors, this sucker came to life, and I almost had a heart attack. So the cool thing about it is that uh, that doesn't mean, well, that means my job's done. I don't have to do any more searching. It may have been the fuse all along. Maybe for you, you just need to replace your fuse in the, in the thing and you'll be ready to go. But uh, for me, I figured, you know what? I might as well do the capacitors because, you know, the fuse didn't look blown when I got it. So it's got to be all those little capacitors. So anyway, I recommend you do both because more than likely, uh, there's a reason why this set of capacitors in this unit uh, went bad and somebody else was able to successfully replace them all. So I recommend you uh, get a hold of all of these guys, replace them in the uh, power supply, and maybe you can bring your DH30,000U back to life again. I will caution you that is a power supply that you're dealing with there. So you need to have a little foreknowledge of dealing with uh, high voltages, and I don't want anybody out there to get electrocuted because you watched this video. So do it at your own risk. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and hopefully it helps you get your DVHS, DVHS deck back running again, just like mine is. Have a good day, and thanks for watching. Check out all my videos. I might have something else in there to help you fix something. Maybe like a receiver or, or maybe even a, an old rear projection TV that has a color view in it. I will see you guys later.